as a normal human being, you do have doubts at times when you're not sure if this is working for you, or you're not sure where this is going to take you, or the next few decisions you make are really going to be the right ones to get you where you want to be. Everyone experiences doubts. At the same time, you're going to think to yourself, if I was put in this situation to, to fail, or am I put in this situation to learn something and move forward from it? I wasn't prone to ever line up with the rest of them Tested if I invested my time It would have been hell for them Came up and I tore it down Stole the mic and I held it out Over time I never known for lying My click strap with that real raw sound In the midst of the mix We spitting with the list in the league Give our own we taking the piss You believe with the shit Cause we're literally really kidding We'll be on with a spit Salute to the chief Slay to the beast Reaching the masses Boss to the beef You taking a seat But the intent to fall back Is a whack ain't passing the track with me So chill with these haters I call shots with no chasers Got your hands up to the ceiling With your mind telling you latest we head strong with that hustle got our nine fives no blind eyes we talk life and we own nights and we still grinding up our minds like hey Uh, my name is Charles Aloso, I'm 26 years old, I'm a rapper, and my alias is, well, stage name is um, LOC. Yeah. I actually started taking hip hop on an expressive level on my own terms, probably when I was 12 or 13. The person that actually got me to start writing my own stuff would be Eminem, only, only because he was different from a lot of the rappers at that time coming out, obviously because of his race and the other stuff he was talking about, so I kind of related to that because I grew up in a scene full of like, you know, Polynesian, like, married cultured people and stuff like that. And I was probably like one of the only Asians that were trying to, to be an MC or rap. So within me and, and my train of thought, expression through poetry or writing lyrics, it was something that I could do. You know, hip hop to me was, was an outlet. It was probably the only option I would take to um, put myself out there as a personality in society, like somebody who does hip hop. I have opened for a couple of names. So I've sort of gotten used to what you've got to go through when you get into the venue. But Exhibit was different. <laughs> Having your name next to his name on the flyer as an opening act is, is a big deal for, for somebody like me. It's something that you probably take with you to till the day you die. Uh, there's, there's always like that, that few, like two minutes where you feel like nervous as fuck, where you're just like, man, I, I don't know if I'm gonna even come out and they're gonna appreciate what I'm doing, or I'm, am I gonna get like booed, am I gonna get looked over? But then like once you, you step on stage, it's like you have really much, pretty much no choice but to just pump it out. You know, there are times where it's just like, you get caught up with all these lights and everybody's looking at you and you're just like, Okay, so what the fuck am I supposed to be saying right now, you know what I mean? Every time you perform, regardless if it's 13, 20 people, 5,000 people, if you're on stage and you have a mic in your hand and you're doing your music, if you don't show them that you believe in what you're doing, they're not going to give you the fucking time of day, man. My dad was a business salesperson for, for a suits company and I always rock up in suits and briefcases and I, was, I, I think to myself, you know, maybe, maybe I'll have to grow up to be like that. You know what I mean, and and have a nice job, and you know, be normal like like him. I'm not saying like he's like normal in a bad way. I'm just saying that that's his reality and stuff like that. And that's what I saw. As I'm kind of like mentally sort of preparing myself for that as well because I am getting older, and usually at this time, like you got you start, you got to start thinking about your future and where you're gonna stand. I work at a shoe store. I sell sneakers, but yeah, I do retail just like everybody else, and I enjoy it. Yeah, sneakers are like my second sort of hobby slash passion. I'm not as crazy as most people, but I enjoy my job. In the next five years, shit, well, I'm 26 now, so personally, I think that I will be involved in music in some way. Yeah, reality does kick in sometimes, and you've got to make sure that you're on top of your lifestyle, whether you are successful or not. But um, I don't think I can walk away from music that easy. 
to be honest, I'm not looking to make a million dollars. So within the next five years, I just want to know that I've given it a shot, that I've had a run, that my name's been there, that I've actually I've tried or I've made it or, or whatnot. Like it's a different definition of making it when you succeed, knowing that you came to do what you what you want to do. If music doesn't happen for me, I think I think journalism would be good. I, I applied for a journalism course in Blacktown. And you had to do a test to, to get in. And I got in, but I didn't do it. Because I wanted to be a rapper. <laughs> oh, shit. I'll probably do that again if I don't make it. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, we got a very special guest in the house. He, got, he does music with Lee Monroe. He goes by the name of LFC. He about to kill this shit. LFC, you ready? Y'all ready to hear LLC? Let me hear you make some noise. Let's go. What up, Sydney? Make some motherfucking noise one more time. Regardless of whether or not it's going to make you billions of dollars or it's just going to get your name out there or whether it's something you do for fun as long as you love what you're doing, you'll be all right. <laughs>